If you'd like to take a sneak peek at the first three chapters of my newest book, Dwell on These Things, stop by DesireJesus.com today and take a look. You're listening to the Chapter a Day Audio Bible. I'm John Stonge, and today we're in Habakkuk chapter 1. And we'll be reading from the Christian Standard Bible. The Pronouncement that the Prophet Habakkuk Saw How long, Lord, must I call for help, and you do not listen, or cry out to you about violence, and you do not save? Why do you force me to look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Oppression and violence are right in front of me. Strife is ongoing, and conflict escalates. This is why the law is ineffective, and justice never emerges, For the wicked restrict the righteous, therefore justice comes out perverted. Look at the nations and observe. Be utterly astounded, for I am doing something in your days that you will not believe when you hear about it. Look, I am raising up the Chaldeans, that bitter, impetuous nation that marches across the earth's open spaces to seize territories not its own. They are fierce and terrifying. Their views of justice and sovereignty stem from themselves. Their horses are swifter than leopards and more fierce than wolves of the night. Their horsemen charge ahead. Their horsemen come from distant lands. They fly like eagles, swooping to devour. All of them come to do violence. Their faces are set in determination. They gather prisoners like sand. They mock kings, and rulers are a joke to them. They laugh at every fortress and build siege ramps to capture it. Then they sweep by like the wind and pass through. They are guilty. Their strength is their God. Are you not from eternity, Lord, my God? My Holy One, you will not die. Lord, you appointed them to execute judgment. My rock, you destined them to punish us. Your eyes are too pure to look on evil, and you cannot tolerate wrongdoing. So why do you tolerate those who are treacherous? Why are you silent while one who is wicked swallows up one who is more righteous than himself? You have made mankind like the fish of the sea, like marine creatures that have no ruler. The Chaldeans pull them all up with a hook, catch them in their dragnet, and gather them in their fishing net. That is why they are glad and rejoice. That is why they sacrifice to their dragnet and burn incense to their fishing net. For by these things their portion is rich and their food plentiful. Will they therefore empty their net and continually slaughter nations without mercy? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for the privilege to begin reading this book of Habakkuk today and meditating on the things that you prophetically revealed to him. Lord, you made it clear to him that you were about to use the Babylonians to bring judgment upon Judah. And knowing that you are holy, he was puzzled by the fact that you show patience to humanity. It seemed to him like you were tolerating evil instead of dealing with it swiftly. But Lord, we can testify to the fact that we are grateful that you have shown us patience. We deserve nothing but condemnation from you, yet you've shown us patience. You've given us time to trust in your Son, Jesus Christ, to experience the gift of your salvation, to walk in repentance as we turn from the sin that we once worshipped and idolized. Lord, thank you for showing us this patience. And we pray that as we have been recipients of your patience, that we would likewise be patient with others. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the things that you teach to us through your word as your Holy Spirit applies these truths to our minds and to our lives. Help us, Lord, we pray, to walk with you today and every day. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. What kind of difference would it make if you could spend the next 31 days of your life seeing yourself from God's eyes? My newest book, 
dwell on these things will help you do just that. Every day our hearts and minds fill with messages about ourselves, about the world, and about God. Messages that we replay in our minds again and again. Some of those messages are accurate and helpful, but some are the exact opposite of the truths that the Lord wants us to embrace. In Dwell on These Things, I'm going to show you how you can replace feelings of discouragement with a sense of God's goodness. How you can practice seeing yourself in the loving way God sees you. How you can exchange negative self-talk for positive biblical messages. And how you can learn to face each day with hope in your heart. To pick up your copy of Dwell on These Things, please visit desirejesus.com slash dwell on these things where you'll find links to order it from your favorite retailer.